quilts and I'm here to show you how I'm going to assemble this stamp caddy from stamping up I have all of my ink pads spread around and I have not done this before so we shall work on this together but first thing inside the bag is that they do have some tools and some instructions so we have a straight piece that has grooves in it for screwing and I have something that looks like a Allen wrench and then something that looks like a T. So I'm assuming this is the handle at the top. So it's basically got a great diagram here for you to follow on how to put this together. And then it gives you some information saying that the color Cali the color caddy will arrive in a nested state. Before you begin assembling it, remove the refill tray and all of the pad trays from the center rod. So everything was supposed to be on a center rod, but it is not on the center rod. The center rod was actually inside of the plastic packaging. To adhere the non-skid pad to the base, So this actually is going to rotate. So I will peel this off. So this is not peeling off. So what I'm going to do is use a pair of scissors to score the paper liner. Hopefully that will help me to get it off. And peel off this backing. And then once that's on, I'm just going to rub it a little bit. Okay. And next it says to screw the upper rod into the center rod. So I and I'm going to screw in the upper rod into the lower. Now place the first paper tray on the center rod. So this actually goes into the bottom of the tray, which it doesn't state, but it might be in the instructions. And the L part is sitting inside there. And now I place my trays on. So here are my trays. I'm going to move this aside for a minute. And this goes, has a little wording on here that says this side up. So I'm going to flip the entire tray set over and then we add our first tray. And it has little areas where this little section sits in between. And then it says to place the second tray on top of the first so that the notches of the second tray click into the ridges of the first tray. So let's see, we just put this down. And it's saying this side up, 
Okay, so now I see what they're doing. You want to rotate them one quarter turn so that they sit on these notches. So then that means this tray will go this way. It's pretty cool. The next tray, I rotate. So you're kind of rotating a quarter turn every other tray. So that they nest right on top of each other. It's pretty cool. So I had 12 trays that I just added onto this stand and it says place the refill tray on top of the last tray and it has little notches in here as well that sits on top of those. So you have to make sure you have it turned in the right direction because you can't see it from the top. go and the tray is locked in place so the last part is the handle that you're going to screw on top until it locks and clicks and I'm hoping that by screwing this on it's going to pull up the bottom part so we shall see yes so it's hooked in now but if I keep tightening tightening it then it will pull the the bottom tray where I have the L, it'll make sure that that's snug on the bottom. And so now it's locked in place and I can actually use the carrying handle to pick it up. So now the next thing is to insert all of the pads. So I have a stack of pads here and all of them have come wrapped. So I am going to have to open them all. But I like the stamping up pads because when they store, the pad is actually upside down and you actually slide it out and flip it over to open. So you it's locked in when you pull towards yourself, push it up, flip the pad over, push it back in. I've been setting up my caddy and I just thought that I would come back and show you how it's working. It turns really easily. I still have my pinks and my neutrals to add, but I wanted to show you something with the Stamping Up product. When I first showed you putting this pad in, I actually had turned it this way and put it in. But that is not the way that it goes. It actually goes in like so. And I discovered that they have labels that go on the ink pads as well. So I'll just show you on the black. Underneath the stamp pad, they have a film that you can pull off, a little sticky film. And then it also is attached to an adhesive back. I just go ahead and peel both of those off. And on the back, they actually have the names of the colors in four different languages. So I am going to pull off the English. And you want to put it, have your stamping pad face towards you so that you can read it. And then you want to put it down here on the upper lid. So I just take it, put it on one end, and then I just hold it to a line throughout the other end. And then I like to rub it down just to make sure that it's secure. And then that is your stamp pad. 
So I am still setting these up, but I thought that I would just come share that with you. So far, I have my yellow and orange in place. Over here, I'm having pink, reds, and purples. Here, I have blues through teals and greens. And this is going to be my neutral sides. So I will continue working with this, but I just wanted to share that. I really love how Stampin' Up! has made this product. It's worth the money. And I am also going to show you how I stored my old pads. But I'll be back. Alrighty, I'm back. I have everything set up. And I just thought that I would do a recap of what I have left. I have this inside circle on the tray. I only use the outside edges. So I can probably use this on some other piece of equipment that I have. And keep it sturdy on my work surface. I do like to keep instructions for things. So I will probably scan this into my computer and save it as a file. What I really love is that I have two of these larger boxes and one of the smaller one. These are very nice boxes. All they have is the stamping up label here telling what the product is. I no longer need the box for that. But I will recycle these boxes either for gifts or storage. They're very nice. These are items that keep on giving. And so now I have all of my pads in. And I do have empty sides on two of them. My neutrals here. I still have... I think five or six. One, two, three, four, five. I have five left there. And I have six left where I have my yellow and oranges. So I really like the quality of this product. So yes, it has a tray on top that I can also store some other things. But let's take a quick look at what I was storing my guys in, my pads in before. This is a tray. And it's a snapware container that's 15 and a half by 11 and a half. And the depth of it is 2.9 in the height. So I was using a lot of the Memento ink pad, ink spots or teardrops as they call them. And I really liked the ink. It was just that I needed to have a system where I had, I could ink a bigger space. I was using these little things when I was working with stamps that would fit a whole card's front. So I wanted to do something different. I also was storing in here the little ink spots from Stamping Up. So I have all of those in here as well. And these things I probably will now use when I go on retreat. So I don't have to take the big stand here. But if I wanted to take this big stand to retreat, it would easily fit in one of those square bottom bags. So I think that's really, that's just awesome. I do have a few stamp pads that are pigment ink like these. And they will slide into the slots as well and not come out. So I can actually put my pigment inks in here as well. So I thought that was pretty good. Now this one's a little bigger so it doesn't fit as well. But let's see if I can slide it over. Yeah, it doesn't fit as well, but it will fit. So I'm loving that. This is a Pigma ink. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just slide in my Pigma inks in here. This is a glue pad. Versamark. Clear resist pad from Rangers. This is an acid-free dye pad in the black. So these were some of the things. This one's by Stupendous. Let's see if it fits in here. Yes, it fits in. So, Stimpendous will work. This duet, the two-tone in one, does not fit. And I've had this one for a while. So, yeah. But that one doesn't fit as well, but it will go in. So, I have another clear. So, I'm going to put all of my clear things up on top. And I am going to put whatever black inks I have down at the bottom. I have stays on black. This is a red ink from Hampton Art. And I don't have any space available in the red, so I'll just come over here and put it on the orange side. Again, these are, so I'm trying to keep my pigment inks together. 
those two will die. Okay. A little bitty Versa mark. Just put that up on the top for right now. Another little Versa mark. And I've got a very vanilla Pigma ink from Stamping Up. And I don't have this over in the other area. So I'm going to keep that and put that on top. And I have Versamark Refill. All of my other Stamping Up spots I'm just going to leave in here. I do have a few Distress Inks from Ranger and they stack on top of each other. And I can put those in as well. Got one more. So I'm just reading my stamping spots to make sure that I have all the colors. And I just saw that I have a stamping spot called basic gray and I don't have that in the larger pad so I will put that over there see chocolate chips knights of navy smoky slate mint macaron let's see if I have that one I don't have mint macaron so I'll put that up there this is tip top taupe and I don't have that one, so I'm just adding on the top. I'm not organizing. I'm just going through to see what colors I have and don't have. This one's called Cherry Cobbler. I love being organized because it so makes your crafting so much easier. I have Cherry Cobbler. This is the Stamping Up Whisper White. And I don't have that one, so I will put that up there. This is the Lost Lagoon in the blues. And I don't have it, so that stamping spot will go up. I have a stamping spot called Celestial Copper, and it's a pigment ink. I really love this color. I don't know where I got this from, but I just love this copper pigment and then to put clear embossing powder on it. It is just gorgeous. And the last inking spot I have is Cajun Craze and I think I have that. Yes, I do. And this is from Stamping Up and it is the Stay Zone Pad and Ink Refill White. So I want that. And I've got Memento Luke for mixed media. Uh, it's called Wedding Dress. And it's a stamp pad. I don't remember. I guess it's just a white on white pad. So I'll put it in here as well on the neutral side. So I have all of my blacks. Put you right there. I have a water resist. I have a watermark resist from Ranger and then I have from Fabrico a fabric uh, ink is for fabric paper wood and more so I have one of those I'll put that in the bottom over here that will probably be the least used pad and I'm gonna go ahead and put back in this duet ink pad and then I had this pigment ink that was a multicolored one well dual color but it's three pads so I'm going to put these back in so those are all the pigment inks that I have here because I mostly use white or clear and if I want a color then I will use a different color of embossing powder to get color but that is it and I just love this setup I need to reorganize this part up here but this is what's left of my stamping up ink spots and my teardrops from memento so this is will be what i will most likely be taking to classes or quick little day trips or something like that if i went on a crop most likely i probably would take my whole tray and i will get me a bag that will fit this so 
if you're interested in any of the stamping up products remember my link to my stamping up website is linked in the description box below and i appreciate any business from you and i'll see you in my next video thank you bye bye Thank you.